In this video, we are going to prove that the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h is equal to 1. We're going to see that this is a very important difference quotient necessary to compute the derivative of e to the x in the future. So the, the crux of this proof is based upon the fact that e is the limit as h approaches 0 of the expression 1 plus h to the 1 over h power. So that's actually how we're going to define the number e, all right? And so because of that, we're going to manipulate this limit statement to give us the number e to prove the limit uh, in question right here. And this will be a consequence of the squeeze theorem. Uh, and so it turns out this expression that as you, uh, so since, since e is equal to the limit of 1 plus h to the 1 over h, it's particularly the right-handed limit. It's also the left-handed limit. Now we're going to play around with the right-handed limit and the left-handed limit a little bit differently here. So if we investigate this limit a little bit more detail, we see that if h is just a teeny bit bigger than positive, or a little bit, if, if h is positive as it's a teeny bit bigger than zero, then it turns out that one plus h to the one over h is gonna be less than or equal to e, right? And so as h gets closer and closer to zero from the positive side, this inequality becomes tighter and tighter and tighter, uh, and thus becoming, it becomes equality when the limit is taken here. So this is true when h is close to zero. So working with this inequality then, one plus h to the one over h power is less than or equal to e. If I take the h power of both sides, we see that these powers will cancel. We get one plus h is less than or equal to e to the h. For then we subtract one from both sides, we get h is less than or equal to e to the h minus one. And then finally, if you divide both sides by h, you get this final statement right here, that one, is less than or equal to e to the h minus one over h. If you've seen previous videos in our lecture series, the color coding scheme will hopefully make sense to you. Um, the yellow function e to the h minus one over h, this is the function that we wanna take the limit of. The orange function is gonna be the lower bound of that function for a forthcoming squeeze theorem application. So when h, when h is positive, just a little bit bigger than zero, we, we get this inequality here. One is less than e to the h minus one over h. Well, since E, of course, is the limit, it's the limit as H approaches zero, one plus H to the one over H, it's also the left-handed limit. So E equals the limit as H approaches zero from the left of one plus H to the one over H. Now, if you're approaching zero from the left, that means your number is negative. And so again, as we, as we inspect this limit in a little bit more detail, we see that if H is a little bit smaller than zero, that it's on the negative side, then E will be less than or equal to one plus H to the one over h power. Now, if h is positive, that means negative h is, is the negative. And so we then substitute this inequality in, uh, into this expression right here to see the following. So if h is positive, negative h is negative, and we see that e will be less than or equal to one plus negative h to the one over negative h power. For which if you have one minus, or one plus negative h, that's just one minus h. And if you have one over negative h, that's just negative one over h. Uh, which negative exponents mean that you take the reciprocal of the expression. So one minus h to the negative one over h power, that becomes one over one minus h to the one over h power. Let's play around with this inequality for a second then. So we have this side and this side. If we take the h power on the right, the powers will cancel. We do that on the left-hand side as well. We end up with this expression, e to the h is less than or equal to one over one minus h. Now this is sort of the curious part. We're gonna subtract one from both sides of this expression. So the left-hand side becomes e to the h minus one. The right-hand side becomes one over one minus h minus one, for which then as we wanna to add together these fractions, we're gonna take the number one and reproportion it. One will become one minus h over one minus h for which now as there's a common denominator, we can add the numerators together, you're gonna get one minus one, and then you're gonna have a negative negative h, which a double negative becomes an h. And so we see that e to the h minus one is less than or equal to h over one minus h. For which in this situation, if we divide both sides by h, what we see is the left-hand side will become e to the h minus one over h. The right-hand side, as these h's cancel, we get one over one minus h, thus giving us the statement we see right here. And again, with our color, code, our color coding scheme from before, the yellow function is the function that's gonna get squeezed between two others. The green function is the function on the right. And so if we summarize our findings here, we see the following right here. When, when h is just a little bit bigger than zero on the positive side, we see that one will be less than equal to 
e to the h minus 1 over h, which is less than or equal to 1 over 1 minus h. Now, if we take the right-handed limits as h approaches 0 from above of these expressions, well, 1 is a constant function, therefore its limit will be 1. On the other hand, if you take 1 over 1 minus h as h approaches 0, this will become 1 over 1 minus 0, which simplifies just to be 1. So we see that this function approaches 1, this function approaches 1, and therefore the function e to the h minus 1 over h gets squeezed to that same limit. That is, by the, by the squeeze theorem, we see that the limit as h approaches 0 from above is going to be e to the h minus 1 over h. That, that, that limit will equal, in fact, 1. Now, this was under the assumption that h was greater than 0, so it was a positive number. By a similar argument, if we assume h is less than 0, it turns out all of these inequalities will get flipped around. You're probably used to the fact that if you times an inequality by negative 1, it changes the directions. It's a little bit more involved than that, but replacing h with a negative, it will have the consequence that these inequalities get turned around. So when h is less than 0, we see that 1 over 1 minus h is less than or equal to e to the h minus 1 over h, which is less than or equal to 1. But the, the limits are still the same. As h approaches 0 from the left, 1 will approach 1, and 1 minus 1 over 1 minus h will approach 1 as well. So the squeeze theorem applies again, for which shows us that the left-handed limit is equal to 0. Now, if the right-handed limit, sorry, the, right, the left-handed limit will go to 1, excuse me. So if the right-handed limit gives us a 1 and the right, the, if the right-handed limit gives us 1 and the left-handed limit gives us 1, then the limit, the two-sided limit, that is, will be their common value. And we see that the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h is equal to 1. And so this follows by an application of the squeeze theorem, but more importantly, it follows from the fact that e was the limit. You know, we define e to be the limit of 1 plus h to the 1 over h power as h goes to 0.